Good morning, folks. Man, we got an absolute ripper of a video for you today. All right, so as you saw from the title and thumbnail of this video, we picked this bad unit up for $1,000, which when you adjust for inflation is like $250 in 2019 cash. So $1,000 for an SUV right now, man, that's an absolute steal. So let's quit wasting time and let's get to the reveal. I got money, ain't in change. I got girls, ain't strange. Not to mention, I don't do the tension. When I'm in your ends, I beat you the entrance. And I don't need no guest list when I pull up to the palace. Smoking every room, yeah, we smoking on the chalice. Uh, red cup and we okay. Red cup and we located in the back room where they do things. Everybody know we okay. All right, folks, you know the deal. Most important thing when you're buying one of these beater cars, you got to make sure it can do a proper burnout. Because if she can't squeal, we ain't got a deal. All right, son, let's get her going. <laughs> All right, folks, we got the most important box checked off the list with the burnout test. Now let's start going over why I decided to go ahead and buy this beast of a unit. All right, so first off, let's talk about the issues. The first and most major issue being that it's only two-wheel drive with an open differential. I know, I know. What was I thinking buying a lame two-wheel drive SUV with a freaking one-wheel peel? Well, I'll tell you what I was thinking. I'm here to make YouTube videos, and also, I want to learn how to weld a differential. They call it killing a bird with two stones or some, something like that. So let me fire this thing up and show you guys the next issue. Hear that? Tick, tick. Let's, uh, let's rev it up a little bit here and I'll, and I'll show you what's going on. So as you may be able to tell, she's got a little bit of a tick noise. Let's pop the hood and I'll tell you a little more about it. This is a 94 Nissan Pathfinder. Two wheel drive, like I said, comes with a V6. And these come with the iconic Nissan VG engine. These Nissan VG engines are well known to start developing lifter ticks once they get into high miles. So that's nothing that we can't fix and, and show you guys how to do as well. So let's start going over some of the other some of the other cool things about this car. Let me tell you what, folks, the hottest, sickest feature on this entire car, I gotta tell you what. It's the letter eat switch, brother. Now take a look here. This switch right here flips her from low power mode to freaking letter eat, brother. Look at that. Even says right there on the switch, E-A-T, give her the beans. So the rest of the interior, I'm not gonna lie, she ain't too pretty. This door panel, she's shot. This door panel here, she's shot. The rear door panels, are they're in decent shape. Look at that puppy back there. Let me show you some other things here. You come around to the back. These Pathfinders are pretty cool. I, I've always loved the, uh, the rear gate opening thing, this rear window opening. It's a super cool feature, but this one, uh, the, the shocks, watch out puppy. The struts on this one, they're blown out, brother. So the issues with these weird little odds and ends, like the blown out struts back here and the door panels up front, on eBay, you go take a look. These door panels are 300 bucks. And you go to a junkyard where I've been finding some of the other parts that I needed to piece together on this thing. You don't find a lot of these cars in the junkyards because those VG engines, they just keep on ticking, no pun intended. So let's start going over some of the other things that I've had to replace on this car just in the first couple weeks of having it. First and foremost, door handle on this bad unit. She was done. She's cooked. Had to replace that thing, but that wasn't too hard to find at the, door, at the uh, junkyard. The door handles for the Nissan pickup trucks in this year range also work for the Pathfinders, so that wasn't too big of a deal. Between the Nissan Pathfinders and the pickup trucks, I was able to find one for the driver's side. One of the other problems was on the whole way home, I only had one windshield wiper. This was missing the entire arm, so I had to find one of those in the junkyard. That proved to be a little bit harder to find, but nonetheless, I was able to get one done. In addition to this rear window struts being blown out, the rear trunk struts are blown out. Now, I can find these at auto parts stores. The problem is it's like a month out if I wanna order them because they're specialty. I, I don't know what the heck the deal is, but you can't order these super easy at auto parts stores. So I was able to find some from like a 98 Pathfinder for the trunk here, let me show you. And I'll go over how I did this in a different video. I don't need to bore you with the details, but basically I adapted them over to work on this one. So the laundry list continues. The entire way home from Washington, I had one little speaker in the back there singing 99.5 The Wolf to me the whole way back. And about halfway through, it gave out too. So by the time I got home, there was no working speakers in this entire car. When I popped the door panels off, every one of them was rotten. I recycled those. I wish I could show them to you, but I tossed them. I shouldn't have done that. And in addition to that, there is an issue with the amplifiers on these Pathfinder. And there's an amplifier back there. 
I, again, I'll make a video on how to do all that, but I had to, you can look at that little connector back there. I had to do a little bit of, a little bit of jimmy rigging back here to get the speakers all to work but i was able to get all that done for free so that's going to be a pretty good video coming up i haven't seen anything on youtube about how to do that so we'll show you how to do that a little later so that's all stuff that i knew about prior to forking over the thousand dollars for this pathfinder the reason i decided to buy it anyway in spite of all those issues is because for one i knew they were gonna be relatively cheap and easy to fix for example those lifters i found a set of them for 60 bucks on ebay and that'll take me about an hour and a half maybe two hours to do and i can get a youtube video out of it so it made sense for me main thing you want to be looking for when you're buying when you're trying to buy one of these cheap project cars is you want to make sure you get something that has issues that you can fix so when you're out looking at the car before you buy it you want to make sure you thoroughly inspect everything that you can check press every single button start the thing up drive it take it on a nice long test drive press all the buttons while you drive and make sure everything works make sure all the gauges work and that that's another thing coolant temperature sensor on this car does not work the gauge doesn't nothing happens the gauge doesn't work so you know that's another thing that i know is easy to fix and it's a relatively cheap part so just add it on to the price of the vehicle you know it's not none of that's any too big of a deal it's going to be like thirteen hundred dollars total to get this thing up and running and ready to go welding the differential is not going to cost me but just a couple pieces of scrap metal and some wire from my welder. So, I mean, so none of that's too huge of a deal. So it all comes down to doing a nice thorough inspection of the vehicle before you buy it. I mean, obviously once you buy the car, there's nothing you can do about it. Do not buy a vehicle that you can't start. If you can't start it and let it run and keep, take it for a little test drive before you go, then then don't buy the thing. I mean, I mean, in the case of Ronnie the Red Dakota here, I, I already knew it was a blown engine and that I was gonna have to replace that. So, so it's like whatever issues the engine might have, big freaking deal you know they're gonna that engine's trash i'm gonna replace it anyway so the main thing is you want to do your due diligence when you're picking out a beater piece of crap car that you can fix up maybe flip maybe use to have a little fun with but something that's not going to break down and turn into a money pit for you so i mean sometimes it's inevitable a lot of these project cars always become money pits but that's what i'm looking for mainly when i'm picking out one of these cars folks if you take your time and do your research on the vehicle that you're looking for find out all the known issues find out if it's stuff that you think you can fix and that you that you're confident that you're able to work on you can end up with an absolute unit of a beater car in my case it's a bit of a fixer upper but you know what we got it for a good deal and all the issues it does have is stuff that we can fix at home in the garage with common hand tools so folks thanks for watching stick around and check out the videos that are coming out in the future involving this thing we got a lot of work to do to get this thing right so thanks for watching see you in the next one I, i'm kind of retarded in that